Here's your first worn weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit driveanderson.com. It was a pleasantly warm day across the state line today. Temperatures made their way into the low 80s for many of us underneath plenty of sunshine. However, we did see a few very isolated showers begin to develop in some portions of the state line earlier into the afternoon and into the early evening. Those have since, for the most part, faded away, but we may see at least a brief sprinkle or two still trying to develop mainly east of I-39 over the next couple of hours before the sun sets taking away much of that daytime heating. We do clear out our skies for the overnight hours, dropping our temperatures back down into the 60s for those overnight lows. I'll let you know when we see those temperatures start to climb again, along with our rain chances becoming a bit more widespread. Coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. One Janesville man is arrested for being intoxicated behind the wheel. We recap the pursuit by police to finally land him in custody. Plus, the 4th of July might be over, but that doesn't mean we can't have patriotic barbecues. The one organization grilling for a cause. And hundreds of state liners are in the Forest City to check out some sweet rides. The car show bringing together people and coffee. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 6. Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day. I'm Jess Lipson, thanks for being here. A Janesville man is in custody for his fourth OWI offense. This comes after a late night chase by police. Kyle Connery was arrested at the gas station on East Milwaukee Street. Earlier in the night around 10 p.m., a Janesville officer turned on a vehicle leaving a house on the 400 block of South Jackson Street. According to the police, the car left at a high speed, high rate speed. The, the same officer later spotted the vehicle driving west on East Rasson Street near Garfield Avenue. There was an attempted traffic stop, however, the vehicle fled. The officer later arrested Connery at a gas station. He was taken to the Rock County Jail. Grilling out for a good cause, a Rockford business hosted a post-patriotic cookout this afternoon, serving up burgers and taking donations. Arbor Lake Dietz was there to learn more about the meaning behind the meat. Motorcycles weren't the only thing for sale at Kegel Harley Davidson as the store staff put together a cookout benefiting the Wounded Warrior Project. Usually we do something for the 4th of July and since it was during a weekday we figured let's have a cookout on the 6th and this time we're raising money for the Wounded Warrior Project because Adam Sandoval is coming here um, later this month and his whole convoy, what they do is they raise money for the Wounded Warrior Project. They ride all around the country. I think this year they're doing 30 dealerships. Last year they did 120. We're raising money for that. The project is a nonprofit for veterans and active duty service members, providing mental health and career counseling, long term rehabilitative care, and advocacy. Gaston says the motorcycle community is especially close to veterans, making this a perfect opportunity. Well, a lot of our riding community has veterans in it and people that have served. So again, you know, kind of goes along with that, with helping our servicemen and those that have fought. And Plenty of veterans came on motorcycle to enjoy the food, and Gaston expects many more before the day is up. So we had quite a good crowd. Like I said, we already went through 50 within the first hour, and I still got about an hour, another hour to go, and 50 more burgers to cook up. So hopefully we'll go through all of them today. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Blake Dietz. A downtown Rockford favor took place today. Cars and Coffee brings out the community for, well, Cars and Coffee. It's held at the RPS 205 Administration Building, where hundreds of cars line the streets and parking lots, showing off the hot rides. The event is sponsored by Katie's Cup. Anyone can register to be a part. Around 600 spectators show to each event. Those getting to show off their cars hope to be an inspiration to future car owners. You know, we've been coming out, it's the first Saturday of every month. This is our second year of coming out consistently. It's an amazing turnout. This is 400, almost 500 cars, so this is pretty cool. It's the best show in the area. We've got the Lamborghini. This is our second year with it now. You know, it's the car that I always wanted when I was growing up. It was what we had the posters hanging on the wall. And it's really cool to be able to show it off to people and let all the other kids see that it's possible to get it. It's held on the first Saturday of every month with next Cars and Coffee taking place August 3rd. There will be one September and October as well. Many Rockford families spent the day riding horses and enjoying some nature. Lockwood Park held their weekly fun on the farm. There are tractor wagon rides and activities for the whole family to enjoy. Horseback riding trails highlight the event. 45 minute guided walks through the woods of the park. Hands on a Pony also took place, giving kids a chance to meet and pet one of the big horses. The event will take place every Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. barring weather. 
Swimmers at the Texas beach are thinking twice before getting into the water after a terrifying shark attack. Four people were injured off South Padre Island during this week, and officials believe a single shark was behind the rampage. Here's ABC's Andrew Dimber. Authorities in South Texas are on high alert for sharks after four swimmers encountered the same shark off South Padre Island. Video from a witness shows the shark near the shore, where a man suffered a severe bite to the leg. I turned around, he wasn't there anymore. The victim was pulled to shore by his father-in-law. I started swimming towards him, and then he jumped up out of the water saying, shark, 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 and that's when adrenaline kicked in, I went right, right after him. The shark then bit a second victim and grazed a third. A fourth swimmer was also injured, fending off an attack. Authorities captured this footage of the shark swimming in the area, then flew their helicopter closer to the water, scaring the shark away. It was not a real scene. It was like, how is this, how is this actually happening right now? All of the victims are expected to recover, but experts say the shark's behavior is consistent with how sharks hunt, looking for food by biting what's in front of them. Uh, once they find out it's not a fish, they let go, but the damage has been done. Experts say this type of shark attack is rare and is usually a case of mistaken identity by a hungry shark. And there was another shark bite yesterday in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. The victim visiting from Ohio is expected to be okay. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Hundreds of tourists stranded in Cancun flocked to the city's international airport this morning to, to reschedule their flights and return home after Hurricane Beryl hit the Mexican coast. Travelers crowded in front of airline check-in counters to get flights after more than 300 flights were canceled. Tourists waited in long lines and corridors for their flight as the airport slowly returned to operational mode today. Friday was ob obviously scary. Uh, Thursday night, scary. Uh, but uh, the, the hotel did an amazing job of preparing uh, the hotel and the guests for whatever was to come and kept us fed and kept us safe and uh, it was great. Tropical Storm Barrel passed over Mexico's top beach destinations on Friday, bringing strong winds and heavy rain. Officials say there is no major damage after forging a deadly trail of destruction across the Caribbean. Mexico reported zero casualties as a result of Hurricane Barrel. The Civil Protection Agency said this on Friday. One woman is breaking barriers and changing tires. On the other side, we take a look at one remarkable woman making history in NASCAR. And an unsettled pattern is beginning to develop across the state line here over the next couple of days, bringing us repeated rounds of showers and even a few storms. A track when we could see the heaviest and more widespread rain coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team, with Jess Lipson, Drew Collins, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. As in any high-speed racing event, the tires need changing, and there's one pit crew member of note in the Chicago NASCAR race that's happening this weekend. Not only is the pit crew member a woman, she's the first African-American woman to change those tires for NASCAR. WGN's Judy Wang caught up with her. I wasn't really intimidated at all. You know, if anything, the guys were looking at me and was like, she's not serious, you know, she's not going to be doing this long. On pit road, she's a barrier breaker. They're like, wait, what, you changed tires for NASCAR? You're a professional tire changer? I'm like, yeah. It takes speed, strength, Agility. So what's the fastest you've ever changed a tire? So for five lug, taking the five lug nuts off, my coach timed me at a .85, so under a second. Few women have made the cut. In 2017, Brianna Daniels became the first African-American woman to become a member of a NASCAR pit crew. Daniels was a point guard on Norfolk University's basketball team when NASCAR's Drive for Diversity program visited campus to recruit. I went to the tryout and uh, I, I ended up doing a really, really good job in that first tryout and then got invited to the National NASCAR Drive for Diversity pit crew combine. And I was uh, out, of, out of the 10 people that got selected, I was one of those 10. Daniels aced the tryout and underwent a six month training program, even though she had never watched a race. The most that was on my TV was for like a, a few seconds if I was looking for like a NBA game or NFL game to watch, but I'd never watched NASCAR. Seven years later, the Virginia Beach resident is inspiring NASCAR's next generation. Representation matters, you know, maybe there's, um, 
you know, little brown boys, little brown girls who always wanted to be a part of the sport and now they see somebody in the sport who looks like them, you know. My favorite part is uh, when parents send me pictures and videos of their kids sitting in front of a tire and then they're like, look at them, look at my daughter and my son trying to be like you, changing tires. That's my favorite part. That was Judy Wang reporting. It's been a much drier day out than yesterday. When we return, meteorologist Jordan Wolf will tell us if we will see any rain chance for the rest of the weekend, as well as temperatures for the week ahead. Your first worn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. It's a very pleasant summer day across the state line today and lots of sunshine showing up throughout a few fair weather cumulus clouds that have been developing similar to what we see at our SkyTrack camera up in Beloit, Wisconsin. A lot of that sunshine has helped to warm our spots into the 80s today, but we also did see a few very isolated showers developing out across portions of the state line. Now, some of these strongest cells did at least produce a brief downpour, especially in northern Boone County, but things have since wound down just a little bit, actually much less in coverage of those showers now that we are getting later and later into the evening. Things are continuing to wind down as far as temperatures are concerned as well. We warmed into the 80s for many of us and a couple spots still sit there, but for the most part we're back down in the upper 70s. 78 in Rochelle, 76 in DeKalb, 79 the current temperature in Freeport. Meanwhile, it's 80 degrees in Sterling, 81 in Rockford. Our dew points are still sitting in the 60s, which is very close to where our temperatures may end up falling into the night tonight. Our weather watcher Terry out in Genoa reporting a temperature of 78 degrees along with a dew point of 66. Winds out of the west around 8 miles per hour and no precipitation from him earlier today. As I mentioned, those temperatures are going to fall back down into the low 60s, very similar to where those dew points currently lie underneath clear skies. That's where we're going to see most of the cooling taking place, especially in the shorter term after the sun sets. We warm back into the 80s tomorrow, but that does come with our rain and storm chances that will also be on the rise. Part of the reason for that is because we are going to be seeing an increase in moisture through the region. At least in the short term, we've not really seen much in the more widespread moisture, but we will see quite a bit of that returning to the area as we head into Sunday and then into Monday and then part of Tuesday as well. This is a map that shows precipitable water, which shows just how much moisture there is in a vertical column of air. The darker the colors that there are, the more moisture that there is, especially down to the south, where there is quite a bit of moisture surrounding the Gulf of Mexico. We're not going to be seeing quite that much, but it will be enough for a slow moving cold front to provide numerous chances for showers and storms over the next few days. The first of which comes in as we head toward the overnight hours into early Sunday morning. This will mainly be coming along with a wave of showers and even a few embedded storms as we head into early tomorrow morning. We do get some drier time as we head toward the afternoon, but by the time we get into the later part of the evening, another isolated chance for some scattered showers and storms returns, and that may last as we head into part of Monday as well, because a cold front will be slowly progressing through the area, and that could provide the focus and the convergence at the surface for a lot of this moisture to form some of those showers. When we get into Tuesday, that front will have mostly passed the area, but we may once again see the chance for some scattered showers similar to what what we saw yesterday. As we get into tomorrow, though, temperatures will be warming back up to 84 for the afternoon high, mostly cloudy skies, and a couple chances for some of those scattered storms during the afternoon. Turning our eyes now to the south and tropical storm at Barrel now beginning to work its way a bit closer to Texas, a pretty broad region of the Texas coast now underneath a hurricane warning with tropical storm warnings also surrounding some of that. Right now it is not quite at hurricane strength, but it is entering a very warm area of the Gulf of Mexico and it is expected to strengthen back into a category one or category two storm before eventually making landfall, likely somewhere in the surrounding area near Corpus Christi. Locally, we may see the potential rainfall of that reaching the area by Wednesday or into Thursday, but that's still a little bit uncertain as to when it may reach here, but we are going to be seeing 84 degrees for Sunday, 80 degrees on Monday. Those waves of showers and storms possible as we head through the week ahead, but we are back in the mid and upper 80s as we trend in toward next weekend. All right, thanks, Jordan. Scott's in next with sports. The first big NASCAR race of the weekend in downtown Chicago went off without a hitch. We'll see who took home the checkered flag. And the Cubs' bats went back into the tank today against the Angels.
Now Sports with Sports Director Scott Lever. Rain put a bit of a damper on the first NASCAR weekend of racing on the streets of Chicago last year. That was not the case today, and it should not be tomorrow. Today, conditions there were ideal for the Xfinity Series race, the Loop 110. The racers took 50 laps around the streets past some of Chicago's biggest landmarks, and they might want to put up a statue of Shane Van Gisbergen because he owns these streets. He won the cup race in Chicago last year. Today, he was the first to cross the finish line on Columbus Drive. SVG has now won three straight road course races, and he'll be back on those streets tomorrow afternoon for the cup race, the Grant Park 165. His thing is kicking a rugby ball after winning. He is from New Zealand. At Wrigley Field, it was a slower pace for the Cubs game against the Angels. Kyle Hendricks was the Cubs starting pitcher. He had to leave, though, with lower back tightness after only two innings. He gave up two runs. Angels pitcher Tyler Anderson owned the Cubs. He strikes out Patrick Wisdom in the fourth inning. Then Cody Bellinger next. Anderson struck out 10 in eight scoreless innings. The Cubs only managed four hits and they lost seven to nothing. Now the White Sox lost to the Marlins four to three. Garrett Crochet started but was pulled after only four innings because he'd thrown 93 pitches. He gave up two runs and did not take the loss. It's looking like DeMar DeRozan could be suiting up for the Kings next season. He is in Sacramento this weekend to meet with Kings management. DeRozan's a restricted free agent. The Bulls are expected to do a sign-and-trade deal, signing DeRozan then dealing him to Sacramento if that's where he wants to go. The Spurs are said to be the third team involved in that three-team deal. No word on what the Bulls might get in the trade, but it won't be much. Now, Patrick Williams is not leaving the Bulls. He has resigned with the team reportedly for five years and $90 million. Here's another record for Caitlin Clark. Today she became the first rookie in WNBA history to record a triple-double. She had 19 points, 13 assists, and 12 rebounds for the Indiana Fever. The Fever upset the New York Liberty 83-78. Clark had 17 triple-doubles at Iowa. Well, the Minnesota Vikings are shaken up. Their rookie fourth-round draft pick, Kyrie Jackson, died overnight in a car crash in Maryland. Two of Jackson's old high school teammates also died. Two other vehicles were also involved in the crash. Police say alcohol was likely involved. Jackson was expected to challenge for a starting job in the Vikings defensive secondary. He played at Oregon last year. The women's number one seed at Wimbledon is out. Igas Fiatek was upset in the third round by unseated Yulia Put in Seva in three sets. Viatek never has gotten the hang of playing on grass. She has won four French Open championships on clay and the U.S. Open on the hard court. And through three rounds at the John Deere Classic in Silvis, Davis Thompson's the leader by two strokes. He's 21 under par. Eric Cole and Aaron Rye are tied for second at 19 under. Hayden Springer and Cite Pan are tied for fourth at 17 under. That's sports. We'll be right back. I can't lie, looking at the uh, temperatures coming up for the week, 80s every single day, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not 90 with all the humidity, that's, you know, that's where I start to go, okay, I'm not looking forward to this air conditioning bill, but 80s, 80s in the summertime, I can deal with, because this is actually pretty close to average for this time of year, almost every single day, average 84 degrees for our high temperatures, and we're going to be sitting within a couple degrees of one way or another most of these days going forward, but we are going to be talking about increased rain chances as well, starting with our isolated showers that have been developing here into the afternoon, still fading as we got into the night tonight, but higher coverage of those showers and a few storms moving in as we head toward the overnight hours tonight and early tomorrow morning, another wave of them expected toward Sunday evening and then again on Monday with a cold front passing through the region does not really cool us down too much as we are still back in the 80s Jess as you mentioned heading through the rest of the week. I'll take the temps not the rain. <laughs> That's our show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you at 10.